So today's topic, after the other week's boredom conversation, is entertainment. And it is quite an interesting conversation, like how, like up to what age you're allowed to, or you're entitled to be entertained. I'm gonna tell you a short story. Um, many years ago, I have three kids. Many years ago, they were both, they were like, maybe like eight, five and four, three something like that. And um, I recall going to visit my mom to the coast. And then I was going home. And she said, Oh, my gosh, how are you? How are you gonna deal with all of them? And it's tricky, because in my point of view, it was like, those are my kids, how am I gonna deal with them? It's fine. <laughs> like, I, I'm not, I mean, I don't need to prove anything to anyone. And then I realized that most of the parents point of view is you need to entertain your kids and that makes you kind of a slave but you know it's an active choice we're making as well so all what creation are you using for the entertainment or the need of entertainment you're choosing oh everything that is would you just try to create that? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys, poets, and beyond. So entertainment is often linked with amusement or fun. Um, although it does have um, a time framed conversation about occupying some time. So you entertain yourself, it's a way to kill time or use up time. So everywhere your parents have been entertaining you in order to occupy you and kind of put you in a bit of a parking lot so you would be out of the way for a couple of hours. Um, well, everything that is, would you just try and upgrade that? Ooh, right and wrong, good and bad, put a buckle, nine shorts, boys, poets, and beyond. Um, in Italy, um, and I'm not very updated on, on how screen go, because I have chosen not to have a TV for, I don't know, 10 years. Um, but the most common thing that parents would do with kids at one point of the day, especially when they kind of need to do something like fix dinner or something like this, is to just park their kids in front of the TV um, so that they can be free. So everywhere entertainment is an occupation so that someone else can be free. Everything that is right and wrong, good and bad, pot and fuck, all that shorts, boys, poets, and beyond. And I mean, there is um, entertainment is like, could be something fun or could be also all the many places in which we stick ourselves and we entertain ourselves, say, resolving problem, for example. So how many of you has like have been given the task to solve a problem, to heal your parents, to reassure your parents and so on. And at one point, since you were so bored and we have seen that boredom doesn't go very well with humanoid, um, you entertain yourself in using your talents and capacities to maybe save everyone and everything around you. So everything that is right and wrong, good and bad, put and buckle, like shorts, boys, poets, and beyonds. And um, next week, we're going to talk about playtime, which I would say might be one of my favorite topic. Um, but entertainment has a slightly different connotation. Entertainment is occupying your time with something to be entertained. It has a passive kick as well. So 
everything we learn from our parents about entertainment and everything we sold to our kids or any kids about what entertainment is and is not. Who do this try not create that? Right and wrong, good and bad, put and fuck all night, shorts, boys, poets, idiots. And how normal are you trying to make yourself with the entertainment you're choosing? What does that mean? Like many times entertainment as a form of social sharing um, situation. So we entertain ourselves, say, I don't know, like playing a video game or skateboarding or whatever. Um, so everywhere, oh wow, everywhere entertainment is a desperate attempt to make yourself normal enough to fit in. <laughs> Would you just try and create that right and wrong, good and bad, but a buckle, nine shorts, boys, poets, and beyond. I could talk for hours, but actually I could talk about playtime way more than entertainment because, um, I don't know. like like what i have seen with many well as a kid i would say more than as a parent is oftentimes we are not invited or encouraged to ask for everything we know and desire we're not kind of encouraged to pursue the infinite being we truly be. And that creates a bit of a like indecision, but also like a stuck moment in kids' reality where you're like, okay, so this is it. Like I chose you guys as parents and that's the maximum you have to offer. And so you start to entertain yourself. And it can go many, many different ways. Like it can be constructive entertainment. So I noticed as a kid, again, I don't know, it's today is more as from a kid's point of view rather than a parent's, parent's point of view conversation. But like I escaped in sport and literature as a kid. So it was very good because it was very acceptable for my family. So I would spend at least three hours training in different sports a day and then the weekend. So like, you know, longer times. And then the rest of the time I would be reading and I was a big, like a really avid reader, like reading a lot. So that was a way for me to check out from my parents reality or my family. And yet I have a very acceptable, way to use up some energy, some of the extra, extra energy that I had available. So I don't know if this could go so many ways. Do you have any questions? She does. <laughs> I have actually. You too. Um, so actually, it's so fun because today, well, now I am at my friend's house and she has a kid. Ora mm -hmm. sono a casa di una mia amica e ha una bimba. And I stayed with her. Like she, my friend asked me to stay with her like two hours today. Mm -hmm. Mia amica mi ha chiesto di stare con la bimba due ore because she had some like she was like, oh yeah, after three years I can spend two hours on myself by myself. Perché mm -hmm. mi ha detto dopo tre anni che è nata that yeah, uh, potevo spendere, potevo passare il tempo da sola. And she had to go to work. Actually, she had an appointment. Aveva un appuntamento nata a lavorare. And it was with, a, with this beautiful angel. Era con questo bellissimo angelo. And at some point, she asked me like, well, her, her mother said, okay, you can watch the TV and kind of a show with kids dancing, whatever. <laughs> E la mamma a un certo punto ha detto, ok, potete guardare la televisione con questo spettacolo di bambini che danzano. And I was like, yeah, but why? <laughs> e io ero, sì, ma tipo, perché? <laughs> but the kid, the kid is like so used to do that. And I don't mean to like judge anything about it. Um, però la, bambi, la, la bimba è così tanto abituata, e non lo dico per giudicare nessuno di questi aspetti, that I could not 
say to her, we are not doing that. Che non riuscivo a dirle, non possiamo farlo. And so I tried in so many ways to say, hey, can we read a book? Or we can learn English, you know? Or we can... E quindi ho detto, dai, possiamo leggere un libro, imparare l'inglese. And she was like, no, I want to watch whatever. And so I ended up watching this, I don't know, show. <laughs> this thing. This thing. And yeah, I couldn't get out of, from this situation. Mm -hmm. E alla fine sono finita per guardare questo cosa in tv e non riuscivo a uscire da questa situazione. So, yeah. I wonder what can we say, what can you say actually for those situations where we misidentify inter entertainment as, you know, this kind of thing uh, that can help maybe parents or... Mm. or... Quindi mi chiedo che cosa potresti dire in merito a queste situazioni dove magari misidentifichiamo l'intrattenimento come guardare la tv che potrebbe magari aiutare i genitori. Well... And I love what you said. I love that you were just mentioning like no judging, you know, no judging, because actually there are many, you know, many items of this contextual reality that helps out, especially single parents or just, you know, parents in general to cope with daily tasks like preparing dinner or stuff like this. Um, Many years ago, I wrote an article about um, the arsenic hour. So arsenic, the venom, you know, the, the poison that you would take, right? So the arsenic hour is, I'm just, it's just, it's kind of part of the answer, I feel. So the arsenic hour is around 7, 7.30 p.m. for Italy, culturally. So it is that time where the kids have been disconnected from you all day because they were busy doing their own things and you were busy doing your own things. And they start like nagging about like, when is the dinner ready? Can you serve me some water? Would you play with me? Or just like, they kind of need something. So is that moment of the day? And I know that most parents can relate to that where you would very gladly give them arsenic or take yourself arsenic to just, be out of the situation because it's crazy. I mean, it's acting, you know, you just, <laughs> you just threw the, the pasta in the water and you're like, sweetheart, it's gonna be ready in five minutes. I'm not starving you. I mean, and I'm connected, but I also need to pee and drink some water, you know, and you're like, okay. And they're, and they're freaking out. And um, so, so that moment could be a great moment to just like, you know, we had, I remember that we ha I had, I found some, non-verbal cartoons they were called um, minuscule they were amazing it's a french show and they were um five minutes long two to five minutes long and there were no words they were very like funny interesting beautiful and i remember using them in the arsenic hour to not poison my kids because i was tempted to many times um and it was it really worked for me because it was very short And I could say, I could easily say, you know, wash your hands and come to dinner because it was so short. It was like two to five minutes. So it perfectly worked for me. So, and that, that is actually a question. Like you really want to be pragmatic and not dramatic. And which is something that many parents go to when there are such big topics like screen time or yeah devices right now it's a very big topic like how many hours should a kid stay in front of tv and the screen time is linked to suicide arisal so you know there's so many studies and stuff about it and so in the attempt to be a good parent or not such a horrible parent um there is a lot of polarity there is a lot of right and wrong so what if we just like return that all to sender And you would be like, as a parent, able to and willing to ask what will work here? Because one, no two days are alike. And that, that works for you and that works for your kid. Like, I don't know. Oh my gosh. I'm noticing now I've been working. Anyhow, I was making an example about my t-shirt and I watch it and it's so dusty and disgusting. Anyhow, just... Yeah. Um, so no days are alike. So today you might feel like wearing something and tomorrow you might feel like 
something completely different will work. So one question is what will work here? Two, what is that creating? And I just, I, I'm saying, I'm not a big, I'm personally not a big fan of like series or movies in general. Like, even though I did my thesis on filmography, so I watch a lot of movies at one point in life. Um, I, I'm not easily hooked by anything. Like, I'm not watching for the next thing, anything. Like, it doesn't work for me. Um, but I noticed that there, there might be some... It's a classic like cliffhanger where like the TV series ends and it leaves you with like, what's going on? What's going to happen in the next chapter, you know? Um, so you might want to see if this is what like the TV shows or the screen is creating for your kid. So a constant like thirst for more or a constant need for more, which could be awesome because like it's empowering them to know that there is a next chapter but if it's a need uh it might not necessarily be the most empowering thing so what is that creating in the future and as the future because like say that for example you reward with one more hour of screen time let's say um it, it just creates just create some interesting dynamics that might work or might be dysfunctional depending on the kid i have three kids and they're very different universes so i wouldn't like it might work to have someone rewarded with screen time and it might not work at all with someone else because it would turn into a blackmail so no um and like i would also ask I know it's a, it sounds like a very big question, but like I would ask a kid, like any kid, um, is that creating your future? I mean, I I know it's a big like I mean I I actually I mean I think it's it would be great to introduce the concept of future in young kids, um, and as a mom, I know that there are stepping stones, so. Um, like distinguishing yesterday from today and tomorrow, it's already like take some time because it's 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 just a different sense of space that the kids have that is not necessarily related to the convention of time as in this reality but i would start introducing the concept and the possibility of future for kids starting very young like what future is that creating but like really not doing from a judgy um point of view with expectation like it's not good or you know it's easy to go there with screen time, but like um, rather just just ask them from curiosity. Okay, so what is that creating as a future? And they might not understand the question first and you can break it down. You can be like tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. Like if you watch it, what will, what is that creating? And they might be like, I'm going to be a proficient ballerina as a grown up. And it's like, okay, cool. You know, like, oh, does it get even better? or it might be solely focused on what the people on the show are doing. So they will do this and that. So maybe then you wanna ask a question like, okay, so where are you in the equation? They are going along with their narrative and their story, but where are you? What is that creating? And it's like, oh, and please, I mean, I know it sounds like a very big like conversation for maybe a three-year-old kid, but introducing the concept of future allow them to know, like as a, from a very young age, age, that choice creates. It creates now and it creates in the future. And if you ask them, what would you like to like be as a grown up? Um, and it might change during time, but they might have some things they want to explore. Like I wanted to be a professional football player at one point in time. So I, um, I trained a lot with a football and I learned all kinds of tricks. And I also broke my ankle doing a very cool trick. But anyhow, um, so I knew that this was something that I was going to put my energy toward. And I did for some time and it was creating the information that I required. And then I chose something different and it also worked. Um, and like we say to adults, it's never too late. 
I would say to kids, it's never too early. So start. Um, it's a very long question, well, a very long answer. <laughs> I am sorry, Joy. It's like, <laughs> oh my gosh, and we reach our 20 minutes. Oh my gosh, I look like a oh, really today. Anyhow, um, thank you so much for being on. Next Monday is going to be playtime. I got a lot of things that I'm very intrigued about. Um, playtime my god but today we got kind of got entertainment out of the way and of course there's going to be more and we are putting together an introductory class um, where you can ask your question because i know that this conversation right now is a very i mean it's me talking <laughs> and a couple of questions so it's, it's a lot of talking but you might have like questions or things that you want to go for Okay, so thank you so much.